Now here's the model I like to call plaque man. When we're trying to remember where the blood vessels are, it's often easier to start from a centralized location, in this case the heart, and work away from that centralized location. This right here is the ascending aorta, which will transition to the aortic arch, and then behind the heart will be the descending aorta. As the descending aorta passes through the thoracic cavity above the diaphragm right here, it's called the thoracic aorta. But when it passes through the diaphragm and emerges into the abdominal cavity, it's called the abdominal aorta. This arch of the aorta has three branches. There's going to be a brachiocephalic trunk, a left common carotid, and a left subclavian. This brachiocephalic trunk is going to branch into the right common carotid, which is going to run up the right side of the neck, and the right subclavian. It's called subclavian because it's going to be located underneath the clavicle, which is going to sit right here. Now, there are some branches off of this subclavian artery up here. So here you can see the vertebral artery, and that's going to run up the cervical spine through the transverse foramen in the vertebra. This is going to be the thyrocervical trunk right here and we can see a branch going to the thyroid gland here and also a suprascapular branch right here going to uh, toward the scapula. And then this one out here, this one's going to be called the costocervical trunk. Now we can come back here and follow this left common carotid up and that left common carotid will branch into an internal carotid which is going to go into the skull to contribute to the circle of Willis. Then there's going to be an external carotid that will supply blood to the face and head. Now when this subclavian, and by the way this is true for the left side as well as the right, but when this subclavian passes by the first rib, the name is going to change, and it changes to the axillary artery. Now, when this blood vessel gets down into the brachial region, it's called the brachial artery, and then this brachial artery is going to branch into a radial artery on the thumb side and an ulnar artery on the pinky side. Then we're going to have our superficial palmar arch and our palmar um, common palmar digitals and digital branches down here. On this side, again, we've got left subclavian passing underneath the clavicle. Once it passes the first rib, the name is going to change into the axillary artery. And then when the artery gets down into this humeral region or this brachial region right here, the name's going to change to the brachial artery. And then that will branch into a radial artery and an ulnar artery. Down below the diaphragm, we have the abdominal aorta. Remember, this is part of the descending aorta, but specifically the abdominal aorta. And here we can see a branch coming off the abdominal aorta, which is going to have branches off of it. So we call this a trunk, and this is the celiac trunk. Okay? And the celiac trunk is going to have three branches coming from it. There's going to be a splenic artery, there's going to be a left gastric artery, which is going to go to the lesser curvature of the stomach. And then there's going to be the common hepatic artery, which is going to branch to help to supply blood to the liver. Okay. Inferior to the celiac trunk, we're going to have the superior mesenteric artery branching off. And that superior mesenteric artery is going to supply blood to the small intestines in the first portion of the large intestine. Okay. Then we're going to have the renal arteries branching off of the abdominal aorta. Then we would have the gonadal arteries branching off somewhere in here, but this doesn't show that. And then we would have the inferior mesenteric artery branching off, and the inferior mesenteric would uh, supply blood to the descending colon, um, sigmoid, uh, rectum, and anus.
Now somewhere around L4 or L5, this abdominal aorta is going to branch, and it branches into the common iliac arteries here. Now these common iliac arteries will branch into an internal iliac and an external iliac artery. Now this external iliac artery will pierce the abdominal wall and emerge into the femoral triangle down here in the upper part of the thigh. And when it comes out through the abdominal wall, the name is going to change to the femoral artery. Okay, now this femoral artery is going to continue down through the thigh. It's going to dive deep into the thigh and emerge on the back of the knee as the popliteal artery. Now, this popliteal artery is going to continue and it will branch. There will be an anterior tibial artery and a posterior tibial artery. Here's the lateral femoral circumflex artery. There's going to be a descending branch of that artery going down here. We'll also have an ascending branch of that lateral femoral circumflex artery. This right here is going to be the profunda femoral artery or deep femoral artery. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.